Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm going to be answering question number five from the October 2019 um, International A Level Edexcel Mechanics 1 um, M1 paper. And this question here is about statics and moments. And we've got um, a question about a non uniform beam, AB, has length 5 meters and mass 12 kilograms. Okay, so non-uniform means that the, the mass, the center of mass is not in the geometric center. So if it was a uniform beam, we could say the center of mass acts exactly 2.5 meters in from the end because that will be halfway along the beam. But we cannot say that here because it's non-uniform. Okay, so the center of mass does not act in the geometric center either. That's something we might, be have, to, we might have to find or they might give us that and we have to find something else in the question. So let's see what they ask us. The beam is supported or suspended in a horizontal position by two vertical ropes. Okay, so this is being held up by ropes rather than supports as you find in most of the questions. Um, <clears throat> one rope is attached to the beam at A at the end and the other rope is attached to the beam at C which, which is 1.5 meters in from the other end, which is in from B, as shown in figure two. The distance of the center of mass of the beam from A is 1.75 meters. Okay, so that means the um, the distance, it's not in the geometric center, it's exactly 1.75 meters away from A. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere in the, in the middle here, somewhere between A and C. It's going to be somewhere there, you're going to have 1.75. In fact, 3.5 divided by 2 will give you 1.75, I think, yes. 3, 3 divided by 2 will give you 1.5. Yeah, so it's going to be exactly, actually, exactly halfway between A and C. They're not because of any particular reason, just because they told us the jet center of mass is going to act at 3 point, at 1.75 from A, which is exactly halfway between A and C, because A to C is 3.5. So it's going to act somewhere over here, 1.75 meters in from A. The beam is modeled as a non-uniform rod, as they told us already, and the ropes are modeled as light and extensible strings, so we don't have to consider the weight of the ropes at all because they're light. And extensible just means that the tension in, in, in rope A will be the same all the way through it, and the tension in C will be the same all the way through it. Okay, but of course the tension in A and C would generally be different. They're not connected in that way. Now, then it says a particle of mass m kilograms is now placed on the beam at B and the beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position okay let's just put some of these forces on here so we know that um, you have the weight acting in the geometric center okay, not in the geometric center sorry 1.75 meters away from A which happens to be exactly halfway between A and C okay so that's um, the, the weight is the weight is the mass times g, so 12g is the weight. So here we have a force acting, the weight acting down. Okay, of course we'll have also the other thing that they've told us is there's a particle of mass m kilograms is placed at b. So at b there will be a force which will be mg. So at b there will be a force acting down which is called mg. Okay, so that's obviously what we have to find. Okay, so we have mg in this position over here. Okay, so we have, um, all right, so I think that's everything that we need. Yeah, we got, then of course, we're going to have a tension in the rope A, which I'm going to call TA, and the tension in the rope C, which I'm going to call TC. Okay, so now, those are all the forces acting on this beam. You have the tension in rope A, the tension in rope C, which are keeping it in equilibrium and counterbalancing the forces acting down. Okay, so now we've got to find the largest possible value of M. Okay, now the largest possible value of M, what does that mean? That means that basically um, this thing, if M gets bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually what's going to happen is 
this will not remain in equilibrium it will tilt like this okay because m will get so big that the tension in this string will not be able to counterbalance this weight it's going to be like it's going to be um you know held in equilibrium by these two strings so if m gets really big okay it will basically you know pivot around here and this will drop and that will that will basically move upwards it's going to it's going to start tilting like this okay if m gets really big so we want to find the limit such that you you can't add any more weight if you add any more weight it will start tilting so at the point when it's about to to tilt uh, it will tilt about c okay because that's like where the other place is being held on it will tilt about c it's kind of like when you have if you had something like this you can imagine these as supports and you have a weight here and this is going down it will eventually be that if the weight gets so big it's going to tilt like a seesaw okay it's a very similar situation these two weights these two strings are acting kind of like like supports in a way because they're holding it up so there will come a time when this gets so big the thing will tilt okay it will tilt like this so at the point just before it starts to tilt okay so you can say at the point of tilting you can say at the point of tilting about c it will tilt about c if you put m there um then t a will be equal to zero the tension in the rope a is going to be equal to zero at the point that it's, it's about to tilt that will be equal to zero okay so we got to find okay the situation when this is still in equilibrium it hasn't started tilting yet but it's just about to tilt so it's still in equilibrium the upward forces equal the downward forces and the moments about every point are zero but t a is equal to zero okay so that's the limit that's the limit that you can have for for the value of m if you increase m anymore then it will st start tilting and it won't be in equilibrium anymore and the moments you can't say will be this um cancelled each other the, the the clockwise moments won't equal the anti-clockwise moments because it, ha it will have started to tilt okay so we want to find the value of m that causes um it to be in equilibrium and the tension in a to be zero so it's still in equilibrium but the tension in the, in the rope a is equal to zero okay so we can say that if t a equals zero then we can say that now if we take moments about c okay take moments about c that will help us because we don't know what t t c is we don't know what t a is well we know that t a is zero so taking moments about c we can just you know deal with these two forces because that's going to be zero so if we see take moments about c at the point of tilting then we can say that the clockwise moments about c is going to be mg times 1.5 so mg times 1.5 and that's equal to the anti-clockwise moments which is going to be 12g times this distance here now this distance as we said is 1.75 meters and this distance must also be 1.75 meters because we know that the distance from there to there is 3.5 meters if that's 3.5 meters that's 1.75 we know that 1.75 plus 1.75 equals 3.5 so that must be 3.5 so we can say that's equal to 12g times 1.75 so we can now find what m is okay the g's will cancel out you can say m is equal to 12 times 1.75 divided by 1.5 so we found therefore the value of m so we have 12 times 1.75 over 1.5 and that gives me 14 so it's 14 um it's 14 kilograms the mass is 14 m is 14 okay the largest possible value of m m is 40 so we can say m is 14 okay you don't have to put the kilograms because it says m is 14 okay now m kilograms so m is 14 so that's the largest possible value of m 14 you know, it has to be 14 there so you get 14 kilograms in in that place there so that that is the largest value of m such that this will still be in equilibrium if i increase m anymore it will no longer be in equilibrium it will start to tilt 
then the clockwise moments and the anti-clockwise moments won't be the same and the clockwise moments will be more and it will start to tilt like this in the clockwise direction it will start to, to tilt okay so that's how you do a question when it says the largest possible value of m the largest value of m such that this thing remains in equilibrium that's what it means and it's in, in equilibrium one when the moments are balanced out and the upward forces are equal to the downward forces okay now next part b it says the particle at b is now removed and a particle of mass 15 kilograms is now placed on the beam at the point d where ad equals x meters the beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position so we still have the weight of the beam which was 12g newtons and you have now a the mass moved from from a so you still got tension in a and tension in c but the mass is moved and a new mass of a particle of mass sorry 15 kilograms is now placed on the beam at the point d where ad equals x the beam remains in equilibrium in a horizontal position okay so we don't know what x is all right it's it's an x distance from a so i'm just i'm just going to um call the distance let me just draw something like this i'm just going to put it somewhere randomly and call this the distance x meters okay we don't know what it is but we have at that point a weight acting whoops down which is 15 um, kilograms so 15 g newtons will be acting down here and we need to find the distance x from there to there okay so now in this case we we also told that the tension in the rope attached to c is now twice the tension in a so this so let's call ta this is tension this is going to be two times that tension okay so we have some information here what we can do now is we can work out the value of t first okay because i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to take moments about a to find the value of x okay if i take moments about a then i need to know what t is because i need to find the tension in c and use that in my moments equation so i know that the tension in a which is t plus the tension in c which is 2t those forces balance out the forces acting down which is 12g plus 15g so i can say that 3t is equal to that's 27g so t is equal to 9g that means tc the tension in that rope is equal to 18g and the tension in this rope is equal to 9g so you have 27g acting up and 27g acting down so we can see that we know all these forces now so now i'm going to take moments about a now the reason i'm taking moments about a is twofold one is i want to find the distance x which is the distance from a so my x my the distance unknown that i have in my equation will be the x i won't have to do anything else and secondly that way i can say that all these forces are going to be these two forces acting down are going to be clockwise that way even if for example the the distance x is, is is further away from c then it's still going to be a clockwise moment about a so you know the x i put it in a random place maybe it might be on this side maybe it might be on that side um, i'm assuming it's going to be on this side but it could be either i'm not sure yet but if i take moments about c then if it's on this side it will be clockwise if on this side it will be it will be anti-clockwise all right but if from a whether it's here or there it will always be clockwise so the value of x i get will tell then determine exactly where it is so that's re the reason why i'm taking moments about a i've placed this randomly anyway just so that i can have the diagram okay now <clears throat> so taking moments about a um we're going to have the clockwise moments are 12g times and uh, now that was 1.75 wasn't it yeah 1.75 so we have 12g times 1.75 plus 15 g times x which is what we have to find is equal to the anti-clockwise moments of course for this 
it's going through the pivot that we've called where we're taking the moments about so that won't have any turning effect and this will be this distance which was three meters from here to there was three meters oh sorry 3.5 meters so 3.5 times the tension in rope c which is 18 g so now we've got enough information now the only unknown is this x so let's do our calculations so we have 12 times 1.75 i'm keeping it in terms of g for now that gives me 21 g plus 15 g times x is equal to you've got 3.5 times 18 g so 3.5 times 18 that gives me 63 g okay 3.5 times 18 Yep, that's correct. Now I could say that 15GX is equal to 63G minus 21G. In fact, we can see the Gs will cancel out anyway. So 63 minus 21, that's going to be um, 42. So 15GX, so we can, we can end up with saying 15X equals 42, okay, because the Gs will cancel out. So x is going to be 42 over 15. Okay, so we've got 63 minus 21. As we said, it's 42. Divide that by 15, and we get 14 over 5, which is 2.8. So x equals 2.8 meters. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to be on this side somewhere. All right, 2.8 meters away from a. Okay, so that's the answer for part. B, and that is the end of the question. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's pretty, uh, you know, simple. It's just that you have instead of supports, what you're used to normally, you have ropes holding up the the beam. And in this case, as I mentioned, and the reason I took moments about A is because from the question, you can't be sure whether the weight's acting on this side or that side. Okay, it's possible it could act on either side of the of c but we've basically um you know taken moments about a because whether it acts on this side or that side of c it will still have a clockwise moment about a whereas if you took moments about c okay then you know if it's acting on that side it will be anti-clockwise it'll still give you the the answer in the end but it's just more sensible to do this this way all right so there we have the 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 answer to this question and if you want to answer, see other questions that are to do with um, or from this particular paper, October 2019, you can go to the playlist that should appear over here and click on that. Questions about moments and um, you know equilibrium, you'll find in the playlist that should appear over here. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle. And on the top of the page, you'll find a link to another M1 paper you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon.